Are you sure you don't want to come with me to the doctors? No. The walk will do you good. That's what you need to get out. Well, I'll see you later. No, don't! What? What, what is it? Alex, don't you realise what... I'll try not to be too long. Morning. Morning, sweetheart. You sleep well? Well, as could be expected. Okay, look, yesterday, I'm sorry. But... What do you fancy for breakfast? Nothing at the moment, I'm not hungry. Don't you feel very well, Nardi? Oh, it's just a headache, sweetheart. It's nothing to worry about. Mummy says fresh air is best for a headache. That's absolutely true. Can we go out then? Can we go to the park? No, no, I don't think we can, darling. Oh, please. Don't you want Nardi to get better? Just in cyberspace. Hey, you know, if you don't feel up to it, if you want to stay home a little bit longer... No, what I need is to get back in the swing of things. Are you sure? I think the lad's had enough cuddling. What are you doing? Well, I wrote an article for the student rag. It's about Harrison and my part in his downfall. Ah. Oh, it was I, after much perseverance, who discovered the photo of Lauren with her arms around a mystery lover. Without that vital clue, Harrison Keller might well have been a free man today. Such huge, swelling modesty. Enjoy the jealous moment, because there's going to be lots more to come. It was I. Who are you, Stephen Fry? Well, it's safe to say that things are back to normal around here. So, this is our patient's first port of call. Our glitzy receptionist. Sorry. No, I'm done. I wasn't talking to you. Oh, Terry. Sorry, I'm late. Let's drop Jack off. Oh. Karen Hollins, our receptionist, HCA extraordinaire. Marina Bonaire, our latest health visitor. Hi, nice to meet you. Likewise. Oh, I didn't realise we had a full house, bit of crack on. Pleased to admit you. She always that brisk. She's got a lot on her plate at the moment. Karen Hollins? You might have heard of her son, Jack Collins. He's been in the papers recently. Oh, yeah, Jack Collins. All that business with the forensics guy. Yeah, he was right in the thick of it. He was a bit of a hero. Interesting. Come on. You're stronger than this. Pull yourself together. This is where all the stitching and stabbing takes place. Sorry, Jerry. Ignore a minute. What's up? There's something wrong with the blood pressure machine. I can't get it to work. Oh, the connectors have probably come loose again. I'll come and have a look. I won't be a minute. Oh, no worries. I hope you're not here to sell me something. Mm -hmm. The case. What? It was a joke. Uh, so what can I do for you? Um... <laughs> actually, it's a bit tricky. Go on. Uh, the problem is... Well, uh, sort of... unique. In what way? I think it'd be better all right if I just showed you. I'm sorry, I was just looking for hidden cameras. Cameras? Yeah, I thought this might be some kind of wind-up. Why would you think that? Why indeed? This is Gavin. Say hello to the nice lady, Gavin. Uh, 
I don't understand. Is Gavin meant to be some kind of Trappist monk? <laughs> you see the problem, don't you? Gavin can't talk. He's lost his voice. <laughs> it's amazing how adaptable kids are, eh? They make new friends so easy. How could you do it? Mum, let's not do this. No! You got me to babysit while you were cheating on Sally. No, it wasn't like that. It was exactly like that. Since when did you become as calculating as your father? That's not fair. Oh, isn't it? Well, you must have forgotten how he behaved. All the cheating and the sneaking around and the lies. He tore this family apart, Patrick. You know that. No, I haven't forgotten. Then why are you behaving like that? Do you want history to repeat itself? I'm not Dad. When your father left, it was you that I depended on most of all. Looking back, I suppose that was very selfish. You, you were so young. I just needed someone I could confide in. Yeah, and it was the right thing to do, Mum. You're missing the point, Patrick. You, of all people, know what I went through. And now you want to put Sally through that? There's no abrasions or rawness. Your tonsils seem OK. Your throat's fine. You sure you didn't miss anything? There's got to be something wrong with me. Try not to sound too disappointed. This is a disaster. At the time, it couldn't be much worse. What do you mean? I've got this audition next week. It could be my big break. And if I blow it... Perhaps the reason for Gavin's silence has a psychological basis. Psychological? Maybe the anxiety about the audition is stopping you from projecting your voice. No. No, th that's the last thing I'd be anxious about. I'm really looking forward to it. Is there anything else on your mind? Like what? I don't know. Um, how are things at home? Everything okay? If I'm honest, things are a bit rough with my wife right now. In what way? It's hard to explain. Um, we've been married five years. And it's been great. Tessa's well and truly my other half. She's loving, funny, tough. And then about a week ago... It's like someone snatched her personality away and replaced it with a shadow. What do you think caused the change? That's just it. Nothing. It's weird. Have you tried talking to her? It doesn't do any good. It's like she's in a fog. Well, it sounds as though it wouldn't hurt if Tessa came in to talk to me, maybe. I... Brilliant! That's it, yes. You sort out whatever's going on with Tessa, and that'll cure me. Alex, just because Come I... Come on, Gavin. The clock's ticking. Bye, Doctor. Alex, that's not what I meant. I did... It's OK, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. a lot better. It was really sore, but it's... Yeah, it looks okay. good that way. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with seeing a doctor? Tessa, talk to me. What are you doing? What I should have done a long time ago. Stop it! What the hell do you think you're doing? It's ruined our lives. It's vile. Evil. What are you talking about? You need to calm down. I don't know what's going on, but you're not yourself. I'm not myself! Oh, oh, that really is some joke. Listen to me, Tessa. The doctor just wants to have a chat with you. No, thank you. I've had enough of doctors and medics to last a lifetime. What do you mean by that? Nothing you're saying makes any sense. Just keep away from me! Where are you going? Tessa! Just keep away. Just for the record, I've never done anything like this before. That makes it excusable, does it? If you'd just let me explain. OK, I met Shana at a work conference. She's um, a special education needs coordinator. That's nice for her. We just, we just got on quite well. Swap numbers, you know, for work. She's been ringing ever since. Well, you haven't done a very good job of avoiding her, have you? You don't understand. You have no idea of the stress I've been under. Stress? What stress? The Ofsted meeting, the governor's inspection. Oh, no, Sally. Oh, no, it's Sally's fault. Of course not. Things are so hard now. We both just seem to want different things. Oh, obviously.
I want another child. Well, what does Sally say? She's not interested. Not at all. I've offered to give up work, do the whole house husband thing, whatever it takes. She won't even discuss it. Patrick, she did have a really bad pregnancy. Oh, she's just become so fixated with her career. I haven't even got this job yet, and she's talking about moving up here. I don't figure in any of her plans. Oh, come on, Patrick. You know that's not true. You should see the way she looks at me. She looks right through me. So when temptation came along, it wasn't even about the sex. Not really. Well, I just wanted to stop feeling so worthless. <laughs> the freaks that live in this town. Alex wasn't a freak, exactly. No. A guy claiming that his dummy has laryngitis. It wasn't quite like that. OK, I'm not saying there wasn't a ludicrous element to it, but I can't shake the feeling that I could have helped him more. How exactly? I don't know. The advice I gave him. Not sure it was adequate. Do you want to know what one of the hallmarks of being a good doctor is? Go on. Being able to distinguish between those patients with a genuine medical condition and those that walk through the door as attention-seeking time wasters. What if that difference is blurred? From what you told me, this guy sounds like a grade-A nutter. My advice? Leave well alone. And it's when you're in this screen, that's when you can go on and do the patient profile search. It all looks very efficient. You obviously run a very tight ship. We like to think so. <laughs> Cherry was telling me all about your son earlier. Was she? What was she saying? Oh, all very complimentary. Seems he's something of a core celebre. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just glad that he can get back on with his life. Oh, I'm sorry, if you don't want to talk about it. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, oh, Jack was amazing. I mean, the, the police were at a dead end, and he solved the murder all on his own. Really? At the risk of his own life. That horrible man came after him again in the hospital. I mean, it's good to Rob was there. So, Rob... Ro uh, Rob is my husband. I mean, he, he fought him off. He disarmed him. And then I stepped in and <laughs> floored him. <laughs> well, the men in your life certainly are proactive. He, well, I like to think that Jack takes after me a little bit, you know. He certainly is a remarkable young man. I'd like to meet him. What for? I've got a project he might be interested in. Oh, what kind of project? <sighs> Tessa, please. I'm really sorry if I upset you. I'm just trying to help us all. Could you please come home? Or at least give me a bell and let me know you're okay. Looks like it's just you and me now. Hey, buddy? <laughs> Don't leave me alone! Sorry for that. A roleplay. Jack, I've got a confession to make. I've already researched you. And that article you wrote, I mean, it was brilliant. Thanks. Now I've met you, I'm even more convinced that you'd be perfect for the role of chief prosecutor. Me? Yeah. You know, the head of law, he's going to be playing the judge. And I think he's uh, rather keen that you participate. Yeah? You know, between me and you, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few extra credit points in it for you. So, what do you say? Well, I can't say I'm not tempted. And? I think I'm going to have to say no. Oh, I see. But don't get me wrong, I'm flattered that you've asked me. It sounds like a really exciting project. But... But I've missed out on quite a bit of coursework, and I've got lots of catching up to do. Well, couldn't you come to some sort of arrangement with the tutors? <laughs> I don't want any preferential treatment. All of a sudden, I wouldn't be that popular around here. I understand. I've got to prep for my next class, but I really hope you find the right guy for the part. It's nice to meet you. You too. It's alive. I'm telling you, it's alive. What is? The dummy. It could talk. It spoke to me. I thought it was a, a trick at first, like a tape recorder inside it, but no, it's doing it on its own. Alex. It's saying things. It's not supposed to do that. Right, you need to take a deep breath. 
You know the dummy isn't real, don't you? In that case, I'm going around the twist. Because I know I heard it. What's happening to me? Help me, please. Alex, do you want to come in and see me? Not possible. Alex? Alex? It's such a shame, really. Jack would have been superb in the role play. Oh, he'd have been amazing. I don't suppose... What? You could have a word with him. Get him to change his mind. Well, I, th I think if he's made his mind up, they've got to respect that. Yeah, but that's the trouble. I'm not sure that he was thinking clearly at the time. How do you mean? Well, he told me that he had an awful lot of work on. But I rather suspect that he's still a little bit unsettled over all that business with Harrison. Oh, but it's hardly surprising. I mean, the man did try and kill him twice. All the more reason for him to find something to take his mind off it. He's got study and homework for that. Yeah, but all the same, he... I, I don't think he needs to be put in a vulnerable position right now. Yeah, but look, if I could guarantee... I know what's best for my son, don't you think? <laughs> what's so funny? Nothing, really. I'm... I'm just such a rubbish adulterer. That's why I crashed the car. My nerves couldn't handle it. And I wouldn't mind, but... Anyway, it's, it's probably a good thing, the crash, you know. Oh, how'd you work that out? It's a wake-up call. Telling me not to ruin my marriage. <laughs> well, it's a pity it didn't wake you up earlier. I don't know. But I'm hating it now. Are you going to tell Sally? What? Well, I'm not sure that's going to do anything. How's that going to help? Don't keep secrets, Patrick. They're corrosive. That's something I learned from living with your father. But you're shivering. I think we need to get you inside. No. It's at the window. Staring at me. There's nothing there. Look for yourself. Go on. See? You must go inside. You lead the way. moved again. Or it's been moved. Is there anyone else here? It's just us. And that. Am I hallucinating, imagining it all? I think the explanation might be a bit more rational than that. How do you mean? OK, I know that someone's there. Can you show yourself or I'm going to phone the police? OK, I'll give you a count of three. One, two... What are you? Who are you? I'm Alex's doctor, I take it. You're Tessa? I thought I told you. I don't need a doctor. She's here because of me. Because of that thing. Oh, dear. Everybody's making such a fuss over me today. Right, does somebody want to tell me what's going on? I really fell. Right, you can't get me. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't difficult sneaking back into the house. But why? I had enough. I was desperate. I wanted you to suffer. But I guess for that to work, you'll need to remember. Remember what? That time you started out as a stand-up comedian. What about it? Not only were you lacking in the talent department, but you were always a bag of nerves on stage. Rubbish! Do you remember me suggesting getting a ventriloquist dummy as a kind of double act? <laughs> that was my idea, not yours. She's lying. Am I? I tried to train you to throw your voice, but you never got the hang of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alex, don't. <laughs> Alex, stop <laughs> making that noise. You, you need to focus on what Tess is saying. <laughs> Alex! <laughs> Whenever you performed, I was always somewhere nearby doing the dummy's voice. You're not a ventriloquist. <laughs> you never were. That's just mental. <laughs> she, she's just made that up. Why would you do that? I couldn't forget something like that. I couldn't. Could I? If you're suffering from some kind of memory loss, then there has to have been a trigger. Have you got any ideas? Tessa? Did Alex mention the audition? I tried to talk Alex out of it. Why? I couldn't take the pressure anymore. Oh, and there was the small matter of me being three months pregnant. You're having a baby? But what mattered to you was that thing. You made that perfectly clear the night we had the big row. The night I was admitted to hospital. The night I miscarried. No. Oh. You know the worst of it. I was coming home. And you behaving as if nothing had happened. As if everything was normal. And every time I tried to talk to you about it, you'd start up with that damn humming. I'm so sorry. I don't remember. Why can't I remember? You could be suffering from some form of disassociative hysteria. Perhaps such an extreme emotional trauma that caused him to forget your tragedy. Don't make excuses for him. It was me who lost the baby, not him. And for that reason, he deserves to be punished. Scared out of his wits, you trying to push him over the edge. No, I thought if I could hurt him, it would take the hurt out of me. No matter what you've been through, that is no excuse to use... to use revenge as your own personal therapy. No, not revenge. I want him to just share my pain. Why can't you understand that? Because he lost a baby too. <laughs> I know that you've been deeply wounded. Tessa, you need counselling. <laughs> it's too late. It's way too late. Tessa, what do you want me to do? I'm sorry, Alex. We don't have a marriage anymore. It's a breakage. Go play with your friend. Is my mum about? She's meant to be giving me a lift. She's with a patient at the moment. Sorry if I came on too strong. I didn't mean to put you under any pressure. You didn't? Not made of glass? Yeah, but even so, I should have realised that I was asking far too much of you. What? Well, having Heston as an adversary. I mean, no one would blame you for finding it a daunting prospect. You are joking, right? Heston? What does he know about the law? I'm the one with all the legal expertise. Even so. He has a very commanding presence. What, and I don't? Have you read what's been written about me in the papers? All of those articles say that I'm courageous. Yeah, I noticed that. Ah, I see what you're doing. I'm not going to lie to you. Right now, you're hot property. I just think of all the publicity you can generate for the university. You're pretty ruthless, you know that. The whole idea is cynical, not to mention borderline bad taste. So, will you do it? Of course I will. Count me in. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to refer you to one of my colleagues who can recommend a specialist for you. Will I ever get my memories back? You're aware of the problem now, and well, that's a really good start. What about my marriage? Your prognosis is that bad? At the moment, you're, you're both just very damaged people. Beyond repair? Me and Tessa? That's not for me to say. Well, here's to a new beginning.
Thank you, Doctor. For everything. You take care. Why is it getting harder and harder to persuade Chloe to have a bath at night? Ah, oh, well, that's because she's in the pushing the boundaries phase. Right. And how long does that last? Right up until the I become impossible phase kicks in. So, so much to look forward to there. Hmm. You know, I'm just about coping with her fashion demands. One minute, she's a little princess. The next, she's Lady Gaga. Wait till she asks for a tattoo. <laughs> you know, Sally seems to know what she wants before she even opens her mouth. I'd never do anything to hurt them. Never. I know that. You won't say anything, will you? Well, technically, nothing actually happened. But if you ever do this again, Patrick... I won't, I promise. Well, then, of course, I'm not going to tell her. Come here. Thanks, Mark. Bye-bye. Mm, and good luck. Mm. How do you feel about someone staying the night tonight? Perry? Yeah. What are you doing here? What about that one? I could walk to work from there. Sounds great. What about my work? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And this one is Sanskrit. For Imogen. Tom's nose is out of joint and Brantley is...